In this video, chairs present their views on the importance of having the right mix of people in the boardroom and how to support the development of a high performing boardroom team. To ensure that the board is well managed, make sure there's the right skill set, uh, make sure there's the right balance uh, between uh, the skills so that uh, a board is not tipped uh, you know, sort of in one direction or another. For example, a board of accountants is almost a recipe for disaster. Uh, a board of entrepreneurs or a, a board of uh, colourful characters exactly the same way. I also think it's important to have a range of people on the board so you don't have just one demographic constantly being represented. So all, all the decisions always fall, um, flow to one direction. It's good to have different viewpoints coming into the organization at the board level. So I think it gives a much robust debate and that's when you get great strategy, is when the debates are robust. And I mean literally people going back and forth and discussing why it is a good or not a good idea. And I don't mean arguing. If you've got everyone saying, yep, uh -huh, that's great. I don't think you have an effective board. Depend on the organisation a bit, I suppose, and the rules as to what extent the chair is involved in, in, in choosing board members. In, in my case, at, uh, at Red Cross nationally, uh, eight of my 14 board are actually chosen for me because uh, they, they represent their division. So we have eight, uh, six states and territories all have a person on the board, so I have no say in the selection of those eight. I have some influence in, in, direction, in the selection of the others. Uh, so, as I say, the rules will determine what, what you do there, and I think you should always strive for as much balance as you can in terms of uh, a range of uh, skills, a, a range of uh, talents, uh, and a range of ages as much as you can, and uh, to ensure that there's some gender balance and, uh, and also uh, as much diversity as you can get in terms of, uh, I think, ethnic background as well. Uh, so I think on, the, on that side, uh, the chair's role is a bit limited by the, by the rules, but uh, in terms of induction, uh, I think the chair needs to make sure that there is a proper induction, and I think the chair should be involved in that induction process to indicate at least that chair's style of chairmanship, if nothing else. And the other thing is really to upskill everybody on that board. Um, you don't have to have people that know everything come onto the board, but once they're on the board, they should feel that they're being supported and trained um, and, have, and are gaining the skills necessary to do their role. So there are so many resources out there, there's so much training that you can do with people, um, there's so many uh, things that you can give the board to make them feel that they're getting to know what they should be doing and, and their role and learning more about the organisation. So, um, yeah, review the board, evaluate it frequently, um, and get training, get, get, your get your board members involved in learning how to be a good board member. Yeah, on different organisations I've been, have done it in different ways, but I think the induction for new members is really important. You can sit there, I've been on boards where there's been no induction, and it's quite easy to sit there for six months or 12 months not really knowing what's going on. So I think it's important for the chairman to have to provide some leadership on that process as well, um, to have a tour of, of operations, to actually understand how the finances work, to un understand IT and business systems and um, the mission statement of the organisation, the leadership, the key people, etc., and the risks as well. Yeah. Our board should assess itself. There should be a performance evaluation, clearly, of whole of board and individual director performance. Mm -hmm. But part of that assessment, that performance assessment process, relies on clear goals at the outset for the board. I think the tasks of the board as well, there has to be an, the chairman has to ensure that the board members get an intimate understanding of the business. They have to be, they have to understand the culture, they have to understand the technical health of the business because the board and the chairman has to ensure this, has to play a role in, in supporting the technical health of the organisation, understanding whatever manpower planning, succession planning is required or are required. If the board can elect their own directors, then they really know what to do, who they want to seek out, and perhaps headhunt. I have a strong feeling about that in, in some boards. I can make recommendations for elections for people 
who would be complementary and could do the job, and that's worked well. In some, owners want to make the appointments, but where I'm board chairman, I can make contributions so that I don't get lumbered with somebody that will be ineffectual. And I'm quite strong about that to say, I don't think this person would suit, and generally they support me. I think in all cases they support me. Because I do have a clear vision about what person do we need to bring on to replace that person that is coming. I think a good chair starts to understand very quickly who is ineffective on their board and makes plans to start to phase them out. And that's how you get a good board because most chairs don't inherit the board they want, they inherit the board they have. And it's up to the, the chair to ensure that the board that they have is effective. And it doesn't mean that that means that that, chair, that board agrees with them all the time. It means very much so that everyone is there for the benefit of the organization and they know why that benefit is there, and not just because they say, this is what we should be doing. At a board level, uh, um, you've got to keep, you've got to roll the board. You've got to, some people, um, you know, will leave naturally, some will want to get off. I mean, you've got to know when to perhaps encourage people to stay and when to allow them to go. I mean, you've got to constantly be on the lookout for uh, new board members or potential board members, because inevitably you're going to need them. Um, so I think that it's important that the board renews itself, um, on a, on, if not on a constant basis, but periodically. Otherwise, you become too staid, too comfortable. Uh, well, not so much too staid, too comfortable, because it's never comfortable. But um, you, you know, you, you, you've got to constantly be looking at new ways of doing things, and I think that's true of the management of the organisation as well. Yeah, I just say this to um, the chairman and other groups. Succession planning is terribly important because time is flying along so quickly. And you can't always bring people onto the board. But when you see good people, sometimes you can co-opt them onto committees. And by that, they come on board, they start to understand what it's all about, whether they've got the commitment to the place, the whole deal. We also see their contribution, which could be a major one, which we wouldn't know about. And uh, that allows us to say, oh look, we've got to replace Mary, and uh, here's Jane over here, who's really functioning extremely, she was very good on the board, because we're seeing her in action, so we can pick those things up. As you have heard, getting the right mix of people on the board is important, and the chair often plays a key role in the recruitment of board members. It is also important the chair is on top of succession planning to ensure the continued growth and effectiveness of the board. Nearly everyone we spoke to mentioned the importance of providing some form of induction for new members as well as ongoing training. Finally, most of the chairs agreed that board performance should be regularly evaluated, either internally or by an independent consultant.